So I think we should start off with probably our favourite, which is uh, Nando's. Let's talk about Nando's. Um, obviously, the number one choice of eating delicious, tasty keto meat. Um, yeah, I don't think you can go wrong with Nando's, whatever diet you're on, because if you're just on a low calorie diet, you've got your, you know, just chicken and veg and salad. If you're on keto, it's the same. Like, ugh, it's just, you know, is probably the number one chain that caters to meat eating, low yeah. carb keto people. Hundred percent, and I think just like in terms of like chain restaurants, like I'm not huge on chain restaurants, but I think that one is like it, it's just my. I think it's top tier. I think it's just one of the best ones. Um, because like we tried Miller and Carter for the first time in um, during the uh, what's it eat out to help out. And it was nice, but I didn't, I didn't rave about it. Like, I didn't think it was anything special. Like, I would rather, like, have just cooked a steak at home and, and stuff. But, yeah, Nando's is definitely number one chain restaurant. Um, and I think closely followed by Five Guys for, like, actual go out and eat yeah. out, sit down meals because of the lettuce wraps and the tray. I mean, that is so customised, but and you can order to pick up or order to uh, eat in. Yeah, for both of them, which is just yeah. bang, banging. So what about you then? Uh, it's a lot more difficult, isn't it, than keto? Yeah. Um, so recently I've been trying some more like Indian stuff because mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of uh, like more... And actually Thai as well, because it's, you know, it's a stir fry and you can always have tofu. Um, oh, and here's Ambrose. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, it's just so, and you can always have like a vegetable curry um, and, you know, you just avoid the carbs, basically, like the, the refined carbs. Um, yeah, like if you were to go, if you were to get like a Thai takeout or something, like what would mm. you go to? Yeah. It'd probably be um, like a vegetable stir fry that's got some tofu in it. And what I was saying was that, you know, you can bring your own um, noodles. But like I know you were just, we were talking before, but uh, we are talking about your, the Thai restaurant that's near you. Like you could easily just bring a pack of noodles that cater to your own diet. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that because I think, that's something that I've never thought of before is taking my own substitute food to restaurants because like you say, I guess they're never really going to mind that you bring your own food to eat as long as you're ordering food from them. And especially if it allows you to actually eat there, they'd rather you come and bring some of your own, you know, subsidising food like just noodles or bread as opposed to not go at all. Yeah, I, I think it's so easy to, um, especially with chains, to bring your own keto alternatives so for instance when chiquitos are still open which is no more rest in peace chiquitos i would bring my own tortillas like i'd make flaxseed tortillas bring them and you can just eat them like they don't care as long as you buy the meal yeah, you're buying the tortillas still aren't you but you're just getting rid of those and using yeah yeah exactly and you can always bring your own bread you just have to be aware of what the restaurant's already serving so don't bring gluten to a gluten-free restaurant. Don't bring, you know, nut nut-based tortillas or bread to a nut-free restaurant, for instance. But apart from that, like it's so easy to cater for yourself eating out without feeling like you're not enjoying. Completely agree. Yeah, completely agree. And I think I think you've got to kind of let, let yourself just be easy on yourself as well when you go out, especially if you're going out um, with friends or a social or celebration or something like you know you don't have to be completely strictly keto or stick to this you know arbitrary 20 grams of carbs like go out and enjoy yourself obviously you, you know the limits of what what you can take in terms of like carb intake I guess um so like for me example if I go out and I have a carbier meal like the next day or evening, like depending on the time that I have it, like I'll go and I'll go for a run, do some high, um, high intensity cardio. And then I just feel right as rain again. Like that's the quickest way for me, obviously, like to burn through that, those carbs that I've just put in my body. (laughs) Exactly. And um, I've also, like if I'm going out for a meal out, then 
sometimes I'll fast for the rest of the day, like up until that meal or after that meal. Yeah, I think that's worked really well because if you know you're going to be having, and it works the same with like, because it's going to be higher calorie than what you would typically mm-hmm. have. So it's always good to be able to plan ahead. So like when I was I was the first weight loss journey, so like 2016, if I knew I was going out of the weekend, like I would, um, I would work a lot harder in the week in terms of like training and I'd also eat less on each day. Like I'm nowhere near that kind of level of strictness because also it's not fun. Like I literally used to restrict myself so intensely and I don't, I don't uh, recommend that to anyone. But um, I think the best thing that you can do is kind of like gauge beforehand, mm. see how many. Yeah, almost like gauge the damage that it could potentially cause but obviously it's not going to ruin your progress just going out once but you have to kind of be aware of what you're gonna have if that makes sense so yeah as I said like having higher calorie Mm -hmm. on one day you might want to lower it another day 100% yeah and that's if you are like really you know going for a goal um you know you want to lose a certain amount of weight or whatever it is whereas if you're just chilling you're on a keto you know you're you um you've gone keto just just for the the health and lifestyle benefits like you don't need to be that strict just don't be sick on yourself like it's just there's just no need is there no definitely not um and you just have to be like mindful of not punishing yourself for eating out as well because I think that there's there's so many issues when you may have had like past issues with food that as soon as you go out, it's almost like a, well, the diet, you know, let's just go all out. And then you feel worse than if you just had what you wanted at one time. A hundred percent. I couldn't agree more. But yeah. Um, what other chains would you suggest i did have my phone but i had all my all my notes on it um, so for me subway is another good one that one's not so much like an eat out in the evening one but like you know if you're just on the go and want to grab something subway salad you can't really go wrong like i i, I at most most sources i ignore like the carb content because I think a meal is boring if it's if it's not got sauce. So um, yeah, any spices, kind of- spice is nice. Well, <laughs> spice up here. Um, but one of the really shocking things. So I feel like we need to talk about this. Subway meatballs, fantastic, low carb choice, right? Stop before you eat. <laughs> they have like ten grams of carbs for four meat. I think there's four meatballs. Five grams of carbs per meatball that's so that's so shocking like that's me if someone is doing the arbitrary 20 grams a day that's your carbs gone in that small pot um is that just, because of the tomato sauce or like do they put added sugar or filler or something obviously but i think they put sugar like it undoubtedly they put sugar in tomato in the in the um tomato sauce which i've never understood because i think i don't think you need sugar in it because Tomato sauce I've made tasted great, and it's from yeah. the herb, not the sugar. Um, but I imagine there's also filler in there as well, because I can't imagine they're using, you know, 100% meat. <laughs> they more delicious. But like I used to bang away two pots at a time. Like the first time I, like my first time on keto, and I was doing it with a friend as well. Like we used to bang away two pots of meatballs at a time, and just we go, oh, it's low carb, and we're going to train. I think it's lucky we had them before we trained because it fueled the workout but that's just mad um and it goes to show like actually have a look at the car and like have a look at them because obviously when you've been doing it for such a long time you just assume right you think oh i can't have that many carbs in um it's meatballs and it's a sauce everywhere else it's low but different places have different processes and ingredients so really important to check it out and I think there's so many other options at Subway. Like, you don't have to, even if you were a meatball sub kind of person back in the day, you don't have to have it now. There's, like, there's the rotisserie chicken. There's, you can even have, like, Philly cheese steak salad if you fancy. Um, but I actually really like the 
the vegan patty that they bought out because that was only like 12 carbs plus the salad so if you were having like an omad day you know you'd have it with whatever else on the side and that'd be your meal so much fiber in it though as well like i i don't like to count veggies and salad that much like i just i think it's i think when you're on a diet like if you're on a diet and you are restricting you know your veg intake i think it like that to me that's like a line for me so like i i freely eat vegetables and like i will track them like today i've had cabbage and asparagus i've tracked that like my lunch today came to like around 13 grams of carbs which is fairly high you'd think but actually for how many vegetables are high it was relatively low but that doesn't bother me in the slightest so for me, I'm just a salad. I don't even bother putting in the tracker. I eat all the tomatoes and onions and you know garlic mixed into lemon and all that jazz. Like none of that is tracked. None of that's ever tracked. And it, it, it doesn't impede your program. Right? Well, I feel like when you are you're cutting out an entire food group, but for the benefit of your body, you still have to bring back that enjoyment of what you're having and what you've. Um, what you plan to eat as well because I think if you if you're like at work and you think about what you're going to have for dinner and it is not enjoyable you're not going to want to eat it and then you might reach for something else yes this is like I've had a chat with a really dear friend today actually and they've been told by like the NHS they're basically being put on a starvation diet which is just ridiculous um because all it makes you want to do is eat more right and this actually when um on last week's episode with lauren and lauren (laughs) um one of the things that actually like when i was listening to that um and lauren was saying like you know when you starve your body when you restrict your body so much and it doesn't get the nutrients and the energy that it needs that's where all these cravings start to come out and it's so detrimental and that was something that I've never thought about because a lot of the time I'll have like a bigger meal at lunchtime and then I'm not hungry and then it hits like at nine o'clock and I'm like ah oh, I'm really hungry now like I wish I've had something before and so for the past week I've been having my lunchtime meal but then also like having another smaller meal around six seven o'clock like today we were out at Ikea so I just a triple cheese without the bun and that's just been enough to fill me but I've been making sure that I have like something else but put, putting yourself like restricting yourself so much is is just so counterintuitive it feels like it's the right thing like obviously if I starve myself I'm gonna lose weight but it's not sustainable it's really not and I think that we were, we were always brought up to think that that's okay like you're meant to crave these things but when you're mindful eating your entire life that doesn't happen and that's why people don't always have food issues but when you come from a place where you have constantly dieted or you've had a high sugar um kind of uncontrolled completely diet um you do seem to end up craving those kind of like salty fatty sugary foods a lot more than other people have 100 percent. and i think one of the things that's really important as well like any diet that you go on it has to mimic as closely as possible to your normal routine and to what you usually eat because if you drastically change and this this applies to anything in life if you drastically change something like you're not going to be able to maintain it for long periods of time because you just slip back into old habits. Like, of course, if you really force yourself and you, and you have that discipline, then, you know, you, you probably will. But everyday life, like, um, what was it we were talking about on, like on the first episode, which is um, decision deficit or something like that? Decision fatigue. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that's where that just comes in and you're done. Because if you're putting so many obstacles in front of you, like in front of your goal, then you're not going to get there. And it's just going to be harder for yourself. So what would be your top tip, do you think? Or like your top hacks in general for um, making it as easy as possible to socialise with friends, to eat out? Always look ahead. Always, always look ahead. And I think most places now that... And like you say, if you're eating meat on on keto, it's typically really easy to eat out because every restaurant will do a salad and every restaurant will do meat. 
So if you look at India, India was probably the one that I thought would be the most difficult, but actually is probably one of the easier ones because they do um, like the Sarg Paneer, which is mm-hmm. just these, they do all the tandoori. Um, like you just don't have to have a curry. So there's all amazing like dishes. But yeah, definitely always look ahead. Um, most places, like if you can, have a look at the nutrition because like with Subway, there can be so many surprises. So it's definitely worth looking just as, because we don't want any nasty surprises. Um, and it's all of the condiments as well. That's what it seems to be. Like dressings, it'd be like a honey mustard dressing or something. And then you're like, oh, wait. <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. And then I think the most important thing is if you're going somewhere with a group of friends or celebration or whatever, and for whatever reason you can't stick keto, then don't like remember you're going out to have a good time, you're going out to socialize, mix with your friends. Like, don't let your lifestyle choice, your diet, stop you from having a good time because you'll be miserable in the long run and it's just not worth it. Like, you will look back and just regret it. If you truly want that meal out then you need to commit that you might have to what you need to have to but you might end up eating those carbs and that's okay you know uh, definitely and there's compromise as well isn't there so 100 percent. i mean one of the things that i did want to touch on was um brunches brunches out because i think that is a massively massively like carb filled yeah especially like um prosecco brunches right like i've i've not really done a, a brunch out for a long time one of my favorite pastimes like me and chat will always do for like sunday brunch i guess yeah yeah i guess i did do brunch then <laughs> um but yeah it'd always be like really nice toasted sandwiches and pancakes and waffles and bacon all that kind of good stuff I think, yeah, I think that is the biggest one. I think the best thing that you can do, again, is just like every brunch menu should have eggs and bacon. It's a bit, you know, meh. <laughs> if you want it something a little bit fancy-like, isn't it? But I don't know what the best thing you could do. Yeah, like if you're bringing your own bread, for instance, you can literally have like avocado toast, you could have anything. Um, I'd say like my biggest thing with brunch is green smoothies stay away from them because they've probably got like two bananas in there (laughs) yeah they always have like either lots of mango or banana that's a scam absolute scam you're not a green smoothie if you're not true you know not filled with that vitamins green green, green smoothies like come on (laughs) but also like alcohol cocktails an issue <laughs> i know i know cocktails is the one i've put down like i think i found um the best gin well two gins that i absolutely love so if i want something spirit based um brockman's gin which is probably the best gin out there it's so um so when i prepare that i peel some grapefruit like grapefruit peel into it with some berries that's amazing. And the other one is Ophir. I want to say Ophir or Ophir. And it's like an oriental spice gin. And it's literally a spicy gin. And serve it with like a couple of slices of chilli. Oh, taste sensation. Like even if you don't like chilli, you've got to try it because it's, it's just so unique. I think a lot of people kind of, they think, oh, you know, um, like these cocktails are fine you know but a lot of them even if the even if the fruit is like raspberry or strawberry it's a syrup it's not the real thing (laughs) completely maybe like surely surely we can make i think when we get together we should um we should try and ketify cocktails like i think that would be really really nice well we do have once things are in motion we're gonna do a keto brunch amazing for the photo opportunities perfect um and every brunch needs cocktails multiple exactly it's just free drinking isn't it and 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 you know what else brunch needs is bread so (laughs) yeah lauren where are you (laughs) yeah lauren and her buns are so yeah so if people would like a live stream 
of that than just oh. absolutely let us know. <laughs> or imagine us talking after after alcohol, we're bad enough without. <laughs> That there's no there's no sensors on live, so <laughs> there's <Yeah>. no beeps. <laughs> we are doing ourselves. Um, so yeah, let's run through some other chains and other places that we can think that are good to eat. Maybe we should talk about takeouts as well because they're similar. Um, I guess there's some other options there. So I mean, one of the I think. Uh, and well, one of the cheapest um, chains would be, I say cheapest, um, McDonald's. Oh, yes. Can be done. hundred. Absolutely I, can be done. Vegan? No, no but we're going to s- scratch past that. Because, um, like, well, I mean, you could have the veggie burger on its own, but let's be honest, that is not, that's not okay. And it's probably still not low carb. You can also have salad. <laughs> I mean... Are you going to go to McDonald's and have a salad? <laughs> I used to be that person. I had a salad a couple of times. Oh, yeah, I, 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 it's horrible. But obviously, like, they're not known for making salad. So it was never, they used to, like, back, back, back in the day, like I'm talking when I was a kid, like they used to do like the big salad bowls with like the really delicious dressings and things. But they got rid of those dressings. And as soon as they got rid of that, it went down the hill. But I guess no one... Let's go through the options for you. <laughs> yeah, so meat is options at McDonald's. So my absolute go-to at the minute is just like a triple cheeseburger. And I actually buy the cheeseburger like with the bun because whenever I've had it without the bun, like I really like melted cheese. The cheese is never melted and it's just not as good. So I always have it with the bun and I just literally just deconstruct it and put the bread, bread back in the lots it and just hold it. <laughs> And that goes with a double cheeseburger and single cheeseburger without saying. But yeah, literally any beef burger, just take off the bun. And, you're and sorted. also breakfast. Yeah, same with breakfast. Most important meal of the day. No, I can't remember the last time I've had breakfast. Genuinely. But obviously, like, it's quite clear cut, you know. You can have egg, you can have cheese, you can have the sausage patties, you can have the bacon. It's all there. It's all ready to go for you. Like, I don't know if this is a psychological for me. I mean, like, I've never done keto McDonald's breakfast. Like, off keto, key, like, McDonald's breakfast is just my favourite. Like, it's the best breakfast, do you know what I mean? Like, I'd rather eat McDonald's breakfast than McDonald's main. Like, I'd, yeah. I was thinking, um, I'd rather be- just have hash browns, to be honest. But. It's just all grey. But I don't know, when it comes to doing it keto, I don't know why, but I feel like I'm not getting value for money taking the bun off. Whereas when I do it with a cheeseburger, it feels like nothing. Do you know what I mean? It's I yeah. just... I think it's so ingrained, though, isn't it? Yeah. But what yeah. about if you bought your own bread with you? There right. you go. <laughs> Sorted. What a roll. I'm going to have to try it. But yeah, McDonald's is pretty easy. And I think even, like, the chicken nuggets, I, I think if you share, like, have, like, sh- um, share six between two, I actually don't think there's that many carbs on it. Like, if you're not... No. ...to be strict keto, like, then... Uh, I imagine the mozzarella sticks are not that bad either. But don't quote me on that. Um. <laughs> I, th- I think the breading doesn't help them on the way, but, um, yeah, but like I don't know. Them. They're not that bad. No, because they're only small, aren't they? But yeah, yeah. I would recommend it. I just play it safe and just have, have the burgers. Yeah. But, um, and obviously the same kind of goes for any of those sort of chains um, that they're all going to have their burger options. Yeah. 100%. Spoons is really good, mm-hmm. um, like you were saying before. So, again, halloumi fries as well. 100%. The wings, really quite a good use the steaks. Um, their salads are actually quite nice as well. Like their um, chicken, bacon, avocado salad is like really nice, actually. I will give them that. I've not really done a lot of other like pubby restaurants, to be honest. Like I haven't done pubs for so long. So, I don't really know what's on offer there, but I imagine it's very much the same. Like, I mean, you can always get like a bag. You can always get a steak. You can always get a salad. Um, and normally, for vegetarians and vegans, there is a veggie burger that, for instance, you could have it with, uh, or where you where you can have like tofu, um, fish and chips. You can always have the tofu, and you can have salad, vegetables, whatever you like. Um, 
is genuinely so underrated. Like tofu done properly is delicious. Exactly. Crispy tofu. Yeah. Definitely, definitely on my way to becoming like more meat free. Um, I can't remember if we've spoken about this before, but like I can definitely see myself becoming more and more meat free because I'm like one of the biggest hypocrites in the world when it comes to eating meat. Um, but yeah, there is a, a vegan place in um, Sheffield. And I think this was like the turning point for me. It's called Make No Bones. And I think they're opening up again soon. But we just thought, Do you know what? let's go and have a vegan meal. This is, must have been like a year ago now. We had a burger, some nachos, some loaded fries. And the burger was probably the best burger. Even today, the best burger we have ever had. And it was one of those Beyond Meat burgers that actually like, you because I went and got them from Tesco like I need these in my life more often <laughs> but when you cook them they actually like bleed like they it's crazy like, yeah I like uh, like cook the same same texture a lot the only downside is like vegan stuff like replacements it's just so expensive still too expensive there, there's no reason for tofu to be as expensive as it is no. not when it's made from soybeans which are not expensive no um i think international supermarkets probably the best place to get tofu from like there was again another one in sheffield and we used to get chili crispy tofu and it was just insane it came it was imported from china but it was just vacuum packed and just delicious Honestly, really? Asian supermarkets are the best place to get it and you can then go and get tofu skins <gasps> which are extremely useful um, as like a pastry replacement. So what would, it's a what replacement, sorry? Pastry. Oh, amazing. Oof. Um, I guess if you I... look at my, uh, I've actually got a recipe for keto baklava with it. I would have no idea that came from tofu skins, but I'm going to check that out because... <laughs> I genuinely I love tofu I think the, the one rookie error that I made when I first bought like when I bought, bought my first block of tofu was I did I never drained it I didn't um press it um so if you've never had tofu before or bought it like it's typically stored like it, it comes with water in the container um so you can either buy a tofu press or like me place it between two um chopping boards wrapped in like a towel with as many heavy books and literally you should have seen towers that I created to um, put weight on, on this tofu. Um, but yeah, and then to marinate it because it literally has no flavor, but it will take whatever flavor you put to it. So same with meat really, like meat is yeah. without marinate, well without being marinated. <laughs> No one's eating just a plain chicken breast here, so. If they are, then they're not. <laughs> no, they're, they're not our friends, so. Um, one of the most surprising ones that I actually found was so, obviously, Chipotle is in America and we have a couple in London, but a new chain opened up, which is called Tortilla, and that is, there's one actually in Cambridge, and they do an amazing um, salad. So you can have all your Mexican bits on top and they do like a tofu or and a jackfruit actually, I think. And you can just have that. Well, yeah, there's like Barbarito. I don't know if you've got a Barbarito, but there's loads of those. No, like, no, but similar. Yeah, they they are amazing. Again, it's just all Mexican. It's a burrito, but out of the burrito, isn't it? Um, and there was, there's another one called Rap Chic, which is basically an Indian, tor- an Indian tortilla. It's like Indian Mexican um fusion um and it's just all like indian curries and meats wrapped in an on bread but of course you can have it saladified which is good but one place that i really like i do always miss eating the one thing i need to put my tongue is um sushi um so like yo sushi um was like even though it's not the best sushi it's like somewhere that i used to really enjoy eating and you can still do it because you can have the sashimi um and the salads and things but it's just it's just not the same as having like a proper a proper roll Roll. Uh, you just miss that so that that's one place that i do miss but i think if you for instance if you went to like yo sushi you could always have um the like the tempura items you can always have the chicken katsu just without the rice um there are still a lot of options and even for 
vegans, vegetarians. I think it's like a, is it an aubergine katsu or a sweet potato, something. I know it's like a not as low carb, but, but you can still, even so. Yeah, the one, they do a really nice, like, I think it's miso aubergine. Just a little, That's it, yeah. And they, like, just some of the veg, vegetables. Seaweed you, salad. Yeah. Yeah. So Although can, I'm actually allergic to that seaweed. It's, um, it's such a fun such a weird thing um but basically i used to go to wasabi and i'd have the the little pots of um of that seaweed salad like plain with um sometimes they do like a tofu salad that had lots of like edamame and stuff and uh, i'd have that and then i had it i think twice and every time i would throw up oh. didn't realize what it was it was the seaweed <laughs> Oh what so random like intolerant you know an allergy to have it's that specific seaweed as well because i can have nori like no problem wow well, that's a great snack that is a great snack on the go that's that. so how does someone had it saw it on their stores and they just spat it out because they were like it just tastes like it just tastes like the sea <laughs> you have to get the wasabi one Oh, that not, one's good. I will try it. I just like the plain, the plain Jane one. I know, crazy can move from me, the spice, the spice king. <laughs> <laughs>